Order the January 13th, 2022 Historic District Commission meeting. Welcome. This will be a hybrid setup meeting with um, part of it in person and part of it virtual. Um, do you want me to read the virtual part? Yes, uh, please. Okay. Uh, it's part of this is being held electronically to protect public health and safety due to the COVID-19 virus. Um, and to comply with orders issued by the governor, the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services and or the Washtenaw County Health Department. So we, uh, this is a hybrid meeting, but we intend to conduct this meeting similarly to an in-person meeting. However, please be patient if there are technical issues. Public comment will be via telephone only. Or in person. Or in person if, if someone is here. If you are on telephone. Don't, don't worry about that, Dave. Okay. Don't read, read, those are old numbers from an old screen. Yep. We're the gonna numbers should appear on the screen. Okay. Uh, so the numbers will be on the screen if you'd like to call in uh, for public comment. <laughs> So, um, should we do roll call? Sure. Yes. Commissioner Rockland. Here. Commissioner Fortner. Here. Commissioner White. Here. Commissioner Quijano. Here. Commissioner Epperson. Commissioner Ross. You have a quorum, and to pass any motion, you will need three votes. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, thank you. So now we'll go on to approval of the agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to tonight's agenda? Seeing none, we will approve the agenda. Uh, it's approved as presented. Okay, I don't have the agenda in front of me, so bear with me a moment. Just one second, please. I, I, I've got it right here, but I just need to. Okay, so now we're on to uh, D, public commentary. Okay. <laughs> this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on this agenda. To comment on other such preservation matters, please call. The number should be on your screen. Um, city staff will select callers that have raised their hand. And I believe, are we, do we press star nine on the phone? Does that sound still applicable? Yep, that's okay. correct. Either star okay. nine if you've called in or hit the raise your hand button if you are present in the Zoom meeting. Very good. So you'll hear a, an announcement that the host is allowing you to speak. Please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. So now we'll ask Alexis if there's anyone on the line. There's no one here, I'll report, but I'm wondering from Alexis if there's anyone on the line. Alexis is muted. There we go. Uh, hello, Commissioner, this is Alexis. Sorry, can you repeat that? Oh, um, we're, we're curious here. It's the, the public comment portion of the meeting, and we're wondering if anyone would like to publicly comment on any issue. Right, right. So this would be the technical difficulties, and bear with us. But um, we have uh, six callers on the line that have joined the meeting. Um, I recognize some as being applicants, or um, applicants. But anyway, um, if anyone on the uh, applicants included, if anyone would like to speak at, uh, to the Historic District Commission, please press star nine to raise your hand and I will promote you to a speaker. All right. uh, no one is uh, raising their hand. I'll just repeat, press star nine if you are on Zoom um, to um, speak to the Historic District Commission and in about 20 seconds, we will move on. I think I recognize all these names, so I think it's safe to move on. Very good. Right, yeah. Thank you. All right, um, Chair, we have no people speaking at the um, public hearing. Thank you very much. In that case, we will move on to E, unfinished business. And there is no unfinished business. Yeah, and actually, so we'll- There is. In fact, there is. <laughs> We have some unfinished business, so let's let's attend to that right now. 
Thank you. I will uh, share my screen here. The first up is 113 West Washington Street. This is in the Main Street Historic District. Um, the site is a public alley that runs between the east side of 113 East Washington, West Washington, and the rear of 200 South Main Street. And the applicant is seeking HCC approval to install nine banners that span the alley as part of a one-year public art installation. Here's the alley that we're talking about. This is the former Vogels on the right, and this is the back of 200 South Main uh, Kresge building, uh, uh, and, and the alley that runs between the two of them. I've just got a few more photos of the buildings. So this is the back of the Kresge building. White brick for the first, I don't know, 15 feet, and then it switches to common brick. You can see that there's a big uh, vent here uh, sticking out of the middle of the wall. And there's a little bit of a uh, cornice up here that's in line with the window sills on the second floor. There's that vent sticking out again. I'm telling you these things because you'll need them as markers on the drawings in just a sec. This is the Vogels building across the alley. It is also white brick, um, interestingly, except for the dark brown brick on the front of the storefront. Um, note this window uh, on the brown brick section, and then there's another window farther back on the second floor. Uh, there was previously, uh, well, last uh, summer, they took down an art installation on this wall that came to the HDC um, probably a year or two ago. This installation is for, um, for rods to go across the alley with these hanging um, uh, fabric banners um, hanging down. These color images are from a, uh, an art contest. So these are the um, conceptual designs and we'll stick to the drawings for the, what they're actually gonna look like. They're not up as high as this so the banners aren't as long and there aren't as many of them. But this is the idea. Uh, varying lengths, 18 inches wide, hung by grommets. So here's our alley. This is, this is that wall vent that I mentioned. This is the Vogels building on the top. So there's going to be a ledge, a metal ledge, screwed into mortar joints on both sides. And then these, these metal rods will, will run between them to support the banners. Looks like there are nine of them. Here's another shot, 200 South Main on the left, Vogels on the right. It's near the top of the Vogels building, but um, the 200 South Main is a much taller building. This is not very light. Uh, I'm sorry, this is very light. It's not very dark, unfortunately, but you can see where the placement is. The, the rod goes straight across and these, uh, I'm sorry, the ledge goes straight across. These are where all the rods connect to the metal ledge. Um, this drawing was submitted after I'd already finished the staff report. And you'll notice that the ledge does go across this front window right here. I realize that this is a temporary art installation, but generally anything blocking or impeding historic windows is um, not considered appropriate. So that's something that the commission will have to decide. This is the other side. The, the, the decorative cornice is right here, above where the ledge is screwed into mortar joints um, with, to attach the rods to. Here are the, what, the, what I'm calling rods, um, what they would look like, with the banners hanging down. There's some attachment details. All right. Moving on to the Secretary of the Interior standards. The ones that best apply are numbers 2 and 10. Two says that the historic character of a property will be retained and preserved, the removal of distinctive materials, or alteration of features, spaces, and spatial relationships that characterize a property will be avoided. Number 10 says, new additions and adjacent or related new construction will be undertaken in such a manner that, if removed in the future, the essential form and integrity of the historic property will be unimpaired. From the guidelines for building site, recommended is designing new exterior additions to historic buildings which is compatible with the historic character of the site and which preserve the historic relationship between the building or buildings, landscape features, and open space. Not recommended is introducing new construction onto the building site, which is visually incompatible in terms of size, scale, design, materials, color, and texture, or which destroy historic relationships on the site. Um, very importantly, the, si the Secretary of the Interior's guidelines for masonry recommend identifying, retaining, and preserving masonry features that are important in defining the overall historic character. 
and not recommended as removing or changing masonry features which are important in defining the overall historic character. And these are not technically advertising signs, but they are sign-like um, because we do consider banners to usually be signs. So it's appropriate to attach signage through masonry joints, not masonry units, or through materials that can be easily repaired, such as wood, when the signage is removed. So there's one, um, I mentioned that the, the metal edge would go across the window here, which uh, is one issue, but the other one is that there's nothing in the application that talks about once the installation is removed. It's, it's uh, supposedly a year-long installation. Um, but you can put it up, but once you take it down, it's also very important that all of those mortar joints be repaired where all those little holes are drilled in to install that ledge. It's great that they're hitting mortar joints. That's absolutely the only way to do it. Um, but I have included language in the suggested motion to repair those joints after uh, the whole installation is removed, and it also references the um, National Park Service Preservation Brief Number 2, repointing mortar joints in historic masonry buildings, just to make sure that it's done the right way. You don't want to just go and throw a bunch of Portland cement or something in there and screw up the building even worse, um, but that's, uh, that's a reference for the right way to do it. So that is in the, the, the staff possible motion um, as a condition. Um, staff is, is supportive of the project and thinks that public art installations in an alley are, are pretty cool. Um, I didn't mention that it does need to be 15 feet up in the air. That's pretty high, but that's because uh, service vehicles, trucks, garbage trucks, things that tip things um, need to have that much clearance. And uh, the applicants, the Art Center, have, has also worked with the City of Ann Arbor, um, public management, project management to make sure that they have the right authorizations to uh, install this stuff above the city alley. So they're all good on that. So um, that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Thank you very much for that report, Ms. Thatcher. Um, so uh, Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee. So will you please give us your report and recommendation? Would you like to? Want me to start? Begin, sure. Um, yeah, I think as long as everything is installed in the mortar, mortar joints, the only real issue is the, the crossing of the one window. There's no trim around the window, so the window is recessed from the wall, so it won't really impinge on the window at all, but it does, the bar will cross the, the upper pane. Um, temporary. Um, and I don't believe the building is occupied. Um, so that's really the only, the only outstanding issue, I think, is the, how strongly do we feel about the, the rod going across the one window. Thank you very much. I will, uh, I will say that since this um, application was postponed uh, since from last month, I, I was out there last month as well. So I've, I've been out there twice and looked at the buildings and you know really made sure that that it's all working the way that they want it to work where in terms of it's not hitting anything that it shouldn't hit or anything like that and um, yeah I would agree that there the the window that we're talking about it's not like it's some window way back in the back of the alley which maybe wouldn't be appropriate anyway but it really is the window you know right as the building turns the corner down the alley um, it's just very visible from the sidewalk from many locations. So I, I agree with what I've heard so far where it, like that, that is, uh, I think, an issue. And, and it'll be nice to maybe talk to the applicant and see if they have any ideas that we can resolve it. So with that being said, uh, would the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video, if you could, and provide your name and address for the record. You have up to five minutes to speak. Um, so looks like we've got Jason and Andrew, is that right? Yes. Hi. Hi, I'm Andrew Cohen. I'm calling in from 2688 Easy Street in Ann Arbor. And I'm Jason Ennis. I'm calling in from 1346 Ravenwood Avenue in Ann Arbor as well. Very nice. Do either of you have any comments based on what you've heard so far? 
Uh, sure. So, uh, you know, we we did um, make the adjustment from the last time in talking with and, and consulting with um, Jill to the ledger. Unfortunately, uh, when we laid out the ledger, um, because of the cornice on the Main Street side, um, it, it kind of restricts how high we can put that in order to try and get it um, above that window. Uh, one, one thought as we were talking about it was that we could simply break up that ledger and don't and essentially install two ledgers, one in front, you know, to the, to the um, street side and one to the rear, one continuous one to the rear. Um, so that's something that I think could be modified relatively easy. Um, and we did, we have discussed, and I apologize for not including it uh, within the um, su submission, but we, we have discussed making repairs to, we actually have three submissions, uh, three submittals that we'll be discussing tonight, making repairs uh, in an appropriate fashion, hiring a mason and, and following the uh, you know historic guidelines for repairing all of the, the uh, uh, joints once the projects are, are deinstalled. Great. Thank you for that. Commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicants? Very good. Okay, so I'd now like to open the public hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application. And this, this is at 113 West Washington Street. Um, public comment uh, may be made by calling the phone number that you see on the screen or and, and pressing star nine on your phone or by raising your hand in the Zoom room. So Alexis, do we have anyone wishing to comment? Um, we have no additional attendees other, uh, we've had, let me restart. There are no uh, attendees that have been added since the start of the meeting. So uh, again, the offer stands for any attendees to press star nine, um, but I've recognized most names as being applicants for other items. Very good. Okay, well, I, I will close the public hearing then for this uh, portion of the application. And would any commissioner like to make a motion? Looking around. Okay, I'll make the motion. Here. Okay, Let thank you, it. Commissioner Fortner. <laughs> Let me find it. Okay, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application in the alley between 113 West Washington Street and 200 South Main, both contributing properties in the Main Street Historic District to install nine banner rods on brackets mounted on the continuous ledger as described in, as described in mortar joints on the following conditions. That all hardware is removed and the mortar joints are repaired with an appropriate mortar match when the exhibit ends in a year. As conditioned, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2 and 10, and the guidelines for building sites and masonry and the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines. Support. So that's a move by Commissioner Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. Um, so uh, I suppose now we make we have discussion on the motion. Is that correct? That's correct. Would anyone like to have any discussion here? Yeah, I think. Uh, what? Can you hear me? Um, what Commissioner Fortner was alluding to about that window, the front window, as it turn the building turns the corner towards yes. the alley. Yes. Yeah, and we heard from the applicant that they would be amenable to instead of a continuous ledger, as you stated in the motion, a ledger that is, you know, broken by the window. So maybe we need to amend. Should we amend the motion there instead of saying a continuous ledger in some way that describes breaking it at that window, since that seems like a good idea and I'm seeing everyone nodding yeah. there. 
maybe not everyone nodding, but a lot of well, people I'm just kind of curious yeah, how we, that would work. We you know? can talk about but, it. A after we amend yeah. the motion, then okay. let's have a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do that. So we could amend to say a continuous ledger on the, what direction is that, east? East, east. yep. East. And a, a matching ledger on the west wall that would be broken by the window or be installed so that right. it was on either side of the window. Is that acceptable? Support. Okay, so now we've am amended a motion by Commissioner Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the amended motion? Uh, just clarification of how that would be. It would just be a missing segment over the, across the window or? Well, let's bring Jason back in for this. And, yeah. and could you just describe like what, what we've said there and what, what are you envisioning? Yeah, um, it, it, you're exactly right. We would, we would basically install two ledgers at the same height, one um, to the street side or um, to the, what would that, south, I think, um, towards the street. And then another continuous one on the other side of the window such that that ledger would not be in front of the window and it would be continuous for the the remainder of the installation on the other side is there a, a photo of that building just so, okay. of the window maybe in question just so we can really visualize it and, and sure. uh there it was yeah, yeah. so you'd have a little ledger here it sounds like and a continuous mm -hmm. ledger here. Correct. Okay, well, um, I think we had two issues and one was the ledger and one was the mortar joints and it sounds like they've both been resolved through discussion here, but does anyone have any other discussion? All right, let's vote. All in favor, say yes. 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 All against, say no. Okay. This. Application passes, and uh, what do I say here? Something about building permits? I, the, the script is not oh, evident. Uh, yeah, your application is approved, and be sure to pull any required building permits pull, before proceeding. Pull your permits, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, we can move right on to okay, let's the move next on. item. E2. All right, 120 West Washington is in the, also in the Main Street Historic District. Uh, this is actually 112 Washington that you see here um, on the slide on the screen. It's a two-story brick Italian 8 commercial building that was constructed in 1869. It uh, features original cornices, segmented arches, and stone trim. It was first occupied by William Hertz Painting and Decorating. This is truly one of Ann Arbor's downtown's finest um, historic buildings in terms of um, just, just, just its, its decorative uh, qualities. Um, the building currently, uh, the other building that we're going to talk about currently contains 120 to 124 South Main Street, and the original occupant was the First National Bank. It was built in 1866. So this is uh, uh, what I will call the Zola building because Cafe Zola is in it right now. And here's the alley that we're talking about. Um, lovely red brick, cool trim stone. Uh, on one side and a very utilitarian, I believe it's a modern brick wall on the back. This is uh, an addition that was put onto the back of the Goodyear building at some point in modern history. The, H the applicant is seeking HDC approval to install four banners that span the alley as part of a one-year public art installation. A few more shots of the two buildings. This installation is set back from the sidewalk a little bit, but doesn't go all the way back to um, all of this transformer stuff or whatever it is up on a, a balcony. And this is the other side. This is the, the building that's currently occupied by Hooper Hathaway. This building is not uh, part of this installation. It starts on the gray building, the second building. And there's a close up of it. I think you can see here, old brick down here new brick infill, second story up here, and third story. 
Um, the brick on the, the 112 Zola building is, has very small mortar joints. Um, uh, so the applicants uh, have taken extreme care, I think, to make sure that they're going to be able to hit those. This is a little less invasive in a way, if you, if you want to think about the impacts on the historic buildings. Um, this one has four uh, uh, cables strung between the two buildings on the alley and fabric banners hung from them in this very cool sort of dripping pattern. Um, as soon as I said that, I can't remember if this is the drip application or the previous one was the drip application. One is sunset and one is drip. I'm sorry, I can't keep this them straight. This is sunset. This is sunset, yeah. thank you. Yes, it's a sunset. Um, there's a almost 11 inch gap between the banners and the wall on both sides. Again, 15 feet from the floor of the alley. And this must be the uh, this must be the Zola side. So here's the street East Liberty over here, and you can see one, two, three, four banners hung three between these uh, two rear windows and one just ahead of it. And then on the other side, you can see the longest banners in the back, one, two, three, four. Uh, the banners are varying sizes. And it's a pretty simple um, concrete expansion screw used to anchor them into the wall with the cable run across and the fabric sleeves. So I've already read you standards numbers 2 and 10 and the guidelines for masonry and the historic district guidelines for signs. So um, let me scroll back up here. Let me see if I missed anything. Um, the same uh, condition is proposed on the motion as the previous one about filling in the mortar uh, joints after uh, the art installation is removed. Um, but other than that, this one's uh, very sensitive to the historic building, very repairable, um, and it should be pretty cool looking. So uh, that concludes staff's report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee, and so we'll give our reports now. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, I, I don't have much to add to the staff report. I, I will reiterate what I said last time where, you know, I was out there, we checked it out. It, it all looks like everything's going to line up fine. Um, and I will reiterate, like, this, uh, this is quite set back from the sidewalk and I'm guessing it's because the the building that's kind of close to the sidewalk probably didn't give the required 15 feet of clearance because it is a little shorter mm -hmm. and so maybe they said well we'll just move it back uh, I'm not sure but yeah it'll be it'll be kind of something that you'll see not right at the sidewalk but it'll be kind of a treat you, you won't see it till you really get to the alley because it's it's quite set back um, do you have anything to add, Commissioner yeah, Fortner? No, this doesn't impact the windows, and right. I think on the, the east side, it's not even in historic fabric. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so um, looks like we've got Jason and Andrew. They've already un, uh, got their video going, and uh, do they have to restate their name and address for the record is that uh is no, that that's okay. we've we already know, got you guys <laughs> so uh just let us know if there's anything you'd like to add to to the report based on what you've heard so far nothing to add you're exactly right we moved it back because the 15 foot clearance didn't work for the hoover hathaway building and we'll reiterate that we will uh look into uh, that we will repair the mortar joints after the uh, installations are deinstalled. Yeah, we, we've discussed it and we've set set a budget aside for that so very good thank you commissioners any questions for the applicants okay seeing none we will now open the public hearing for this item this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 120 west washington and um, 
So now you do that by raising your hand within Zoom, or if you're dialing in on the number that you see there, you're gonna press star nine on your phone. And we will go to Alexis and find out if we have any one for the public hearing. Alexis? Someone has, no new has joined the uh, meeting, uh, but in fairness, if anyone on the call uh, would like to speak, please raise your hand with the Zoom button. I see no hands raised. I think you can move on. Thank you very much. So we'll close the public hearing now. Uh, would any commissioner like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Kihana. Sure. Uh, I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 112 West Washington Street and 126 South Main, both contributing properties in the Main Street Historic District to install four fabric panels on wires mounted through mortar joints, not masonry units, stretched across the alley on the following conditions, that all hardware is removed and the mortar joints repaired with an appropriate mortar match when the exhibit ends in a year. The work is conditioned, is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and surrounding area, and meets the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards two and 10, and the guidelines for building sites and masonry and the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Support. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Quijano, supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the motion? This seems pretty straightforward, so let's go right to a vote. All those in favor, say yes. 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 Opposed, say no. Okay, the motion carries and it passes. And um, just like before, we're going to ask that you get uh, permits for starting the project. And I think we can go right into the staff report for the next hearing. Sure. Very good. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Sorry about all the scrolling, since I, I can't hide that from you like I used to be able to from home. <laughs> All right, now we're up to 112 West Liberty Street in the Main Street Historic District. Uh, this is a three-story brick Italianate commercial building. Um, it's part of a matching six-storefront so six row, and the row was built by Adam and Anton Shaberly beginning in 1866. This one that you see here, 112, was remodeled to match the other five in the row in 1883. I think it was the first one built. The original occupant was the Charles Binder Saloon, and um, the applicant is seeking HTC approval to install 50-plus aluminum bars in mortar joints and 40-plus decals on the east wall of the building facing the alley. Additional decals would be installed on the floor of the alley and the sidewalk. The wall and alley floor would be painted in the area beneath the installation. So here's our building. The area of installation is um, from, from near the parapet at the top, kind of swooping down. I'll show you a better drawing in a minute, but it's it's this triangular area at the front of the building. You can see that there's old paint on the walls. Um, it, most of it seems to be in response to graffiti, but it, you know this, this may have been consistently painted at one time, probably was. It's just that it's come off in patches. This wall's in pretty rough shape. It's got uh, some sort of, some kind of mortar just, just, just slathered on up here. This is the corner where trucks tend to hit the most. <laughs> you can see that there's a bollard down here on the corner to protect this part of the building, but um, this, this little cornice has been hit multiple times, though um, the alley bar sign has been spared thus far, so that's a good sign. Um, there are some old windows that have been bricked in here, leaving uh, some, some joints there. Just a couple of different views of that. So the problems are that there used to be another mural here that covered up most of this area that you see in the left-hand picture. And it was supposed to be installed per the HDC in mortar joints, and it wasn't. So there have been other things drilled into this wall also. So you've got lots of little holes here and there and everywhere um, on top of a lot of failing mortar. Um, this building really needs to be repointed quite badly. Down near the ground, it's, it's particularly bad. These, this mortar has just turned into sand. You can dig it out with your finger if you want. Um, so because part of the application is to paint the wall, I think that first the HCC has to decide whether or not it's appropriate to paint this wall. It's, it's previously painted, but it's not like um, 
every brick is completely covered and every mortar joint right now. There's, it has, it's missing more paint than it has, I would say. But if the painting is okay, is approvable because of the paint that's left, then painting over these mortar joints is just going to make the problem worse and cover it up for even longer. Um, and that's really not an appropriate way to go about um, putting more things into mortar. Um, so uh, let me go through the application. On the building, the lower 10 feet is decals on the wall. Um, and then the upper, um, uh, above 10 feet, up to the parapet is these um, aluminum rods that have a single point of attachment um, in order to allow them to hit a mortar joint with each and every one of them. Um, the decals, I believe, are so that people don't try to climb them. And uh, decals are also placed on the alley floor and spilling out into the sidewalk. It's a very, um, it's a very unique installation. Um, it, 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 it would look really cool. Um, I just have some reservations about those mortar joints and making a problem building worse with, with even more um, penetration into the wall and especially with that paint um, sealing things off. Here you can see what the paint would look like. It's two different colors, um, lighter in the front and then darker uh, in the back part. Um, I've already read to you the standards and guidelines. They're the same that uh, apply to the previous two applications. So uh, each of the bars weighs approximately one pound, six ounces. And again, I've got the same um, condition in here about filling in the mortar joints after the installation is removed. Um, uh, it is important that the window sills and the windows themselves are not painted. No part of the, the window frame um, or the, the sills uh, should be covered with paint. That's also indicated in the um, motion. And of course, the decals would have to be removed. I don't have information on uh, how easy or hard that's going to be or what the process will be to get those decals off of the building when they're done. So uh, I would love to hear more about that when we get to uh, uh, Jason and Andrew's um, part of this. But um, overall, staff believes that the work as uh, heavily conditioned is appropriate. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee. Let's uh, give our report. Okay. Um, yeah, I, you know, in agreement with the staff findings, that wall is in really bad shape. <laughs> um, and that putting anything on it will only uh, make it worse before if no repairs are done. Um, and it's clearly been painted <laughs> um, over the years. Um, I guess it's, this is not time for questions. I have a question, but I'll hold off. Okay. So I think I just am in, in agreement with the staff findings. The wall is in great need of repair. Thank you very much, Commissioner Fortner. Um, I agree with what has been said so far. Um, the, um, there, I will just say that there's, there's one maybe, uh, two brick wide strip of wall that is right along the sidewalk. Um, you know, so like the, the southernmost uh, bit there on the first floor that looks like somehow has never been painted. Um, just the way there's just maybe something was there or something because there's it or it's just never been painted on the first floor. So um, I would have a hard time saying that we should paint that brick if it's never been painted, um, but clearly the, the rest of it is. Um, so, uh, you know, I'd, I'd be more amenable to painting the rest of it uh, with the condition that has already been mentioned that we really need to, to fix it up before it gets covered up. Um, so, let me see if I have anything else. Oh, I mean, you know, looking at the wall, like we were able to really only analyze the, 
the bottom six to eight feet or something like that. And, and really, it looked like as you went down, it, went, it got worse, which is you know, what you'd expect with like maybe salty water getting splashed on the bottom or just, uh, the, you know. So it's, you know, what they're proposing is for drilling into mortar joints above 10 feet. And it's possible that the wall is in better shape 10 feet and higher. Um, but that doesn't, so that's good for the mortar joints, but not for the painting. Okay, so with that, let's, um, let's have the applicants back. We've got Jason and Andrew back. Hello. Uh, do you have any uh, comments about what you heard so far or anything you'd like to add at this moment? Sure. Um, so we can certainly. I think. I think the paint is is an idea that we're, you know, willing to take any sort of suggestions on how to do it in the most appropriate fashion. Um, so if it was to say hold it off of a certain amount at that front swath that is not painted, we'd certainly be willing to, um, you know, review that with the artists and see if they still even want to do the paint. Um, as far as repairing the wall, the idea, because the, the artist did think that the wall was in pretty rough shape too as well, and that's where the, the idea to paint the wall came from um, so that it could kind of unify and give them a nice um, background for this um, vibrant installation. Um, you know, I, I don't know if, if repairing the wall prior to paint is in our budget or not, we'd have to kind of discuss that as a group and see if that's something that we could swing before painting if we were allowed to paint it, um, or if just not painting and doing the installation kind of as it's proposed um, without the painted background would be the, the more viable option. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure on that. Uh, as far as the um, decals go, I believe it's a heat set decal, and I believe in order to remove it, you heat it up to as well, and it, and it comes right off. So it's it's a non-permanent decal. It's meant meant to be a temporary decal, essentially. Um, I think that's all I had. Andrew, I don't know if you have anything else. Yeah, and as for the repointing, like Jason said, it, we would just need to um, you know make sure that our Art and Public Committee is okay with that and that the building owner um, is on board as well. Uh, I'm not sure if that falls in our scope of services or, is, or if that's something they would uh, have to take care of. Very good. Okay. Um, well, thanks for those comments. Uh, I'd now like to open the public hearing on this item. Well, sorry. Let's, uh, I think we have questions first, right? Yeah. So let's... Uh, Let's ask questions from the commission. I have a qu I'm not sure I understand what part of the wall will be painted. Do we have a picture outlining yeah. the painted section? The painted section is inside to the left of this line. Okay. This is one shade and this line demarcates another shade of paint. Which obviously remains <laughs> after the rest is yeah. uninstalled. Yep. Are there any questions? I think part of our Sorry, was it now that you understand it, do you have a question, follow up question on the paint, or I don't. was that really the no. Okay, that was the question. That okay. was the question. Very good. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Uh, just one yeah. quick, so just to touch upon the, the decal that you described, its installation and removal process, has, have you or has the artist used it before and can you confirm that it's easily removable? Um, yes, the artist has done, done the decals in a previous installation, okay. a temporary installation to prior, so okay. I, can get, I can get you the specifics on it if, if you like to. Um, see anything else in regard to this the specs. I think that I think the way you described works. it yeah. is helpful in that it it uh it is heated on and then heated off. Um I I do I was wondering sort of uh I guess on both sides like um if it is very difficult to get off 
then uh, that's good for like the sidewalk um, where people will be walking and cars will be driving. And I, 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 do you happen to know if this was used or if this type of thing is used where there's a lot of foot traffic and, and car traffic? Yeah, so I actually was involved in a series of installations when I lived in Chattanooga about three or four years ago. And we, we did a similar decal on the actual pavement and it does wear. Um, and these were similar alleys and they, they had foot traffic as well as vehicular traffic. And it does wear to where you can definitely see that people walk over it and that cars drive over it, but it, it still was intact. And then it was just fully removed um, after the duration of the installation. So um, it will weather and you know at a certain point, even if it's before the year, if it's just weathered so much that it's maybe time to take it off, then we can make that decision at that point in time. Got it. That's very helpful information. Thank you. Um, okay, so any other questions before we move on? All right, let's move on. Uh, we're, we'll move on to the public hearing. So we'll open the public hearing on this item. It's 112 West Liberty Street. And so please uh, raise your hand in the Zoom room or hit star nine on your phone. And we'll go to Alexis. Um, as usual, there are no new attendees, uh, but in fairness, if anyone uh, currently attending would like to speak, please raise your hand on the Zoom feature and I will promote you. Um, I see no hands raised. I think it's safe to assume there are no speakers. Thank you very much, Alexis. So now we'll close the public hearing and I'll ask a commissioner, uh, would you like to make a motion? Thank you. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 112 West Liberty Street, a contributing property in the Main Street Historic District, to paint a portion of the west elevation and install approximately 50 aluminum bars mounted in motor, mortar joints and foil decals on the wall and pavement on the following conditions. That existing mortar joint deficiencies are repaired with an appropriate mortar match before being painted that windows and sills remain unpainted, that all the decals and hardware are removed and those motor joints are repaired with an appropriate mortar match where, when the exhibit ends in a year. As conditioned, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards two and 10 and the guidelines for building sites and masonry and the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines. Support. Okay, that was moved by Commissioner Fortner and seconded by Commissioner White. Do we have any discussion on the motion? Commissioner Rockland? Yes. Um, just to point out one thing about the motion, um, I know that uh, the applicants had some questions about whether or not they would paint the wall and the way it's worded um, it says that the existing mortar joint deficiencies are repaired with an appropriate mortar match before being painted. So I think if they just skip that step of painting the wall, then it wouldn't require repointing the entire wall. Right. Um, and then later in the motion, it does say something about you have to still fix where you attach things when it's removed. Okay. But I think that that might give a little flexibility to, to go either direction that you want to with that. If, if, it's amenable to you guys. That's what I'm hearing. Okay. That's that what's in the motion yeah. as, as stated that, and seconded right now. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You were just letting me. us know that I'm that just, little detail was in there. Yeah. Very good. Yep. Um, okay. So do we have any discussion on the motion here? I think we'll have to discuss whether or not we think that painting right. is appropriate uh, in this case. So does anyone have any comments on that? The, sta the standards say that if it's previously painted, that it should it can be painted. But if it is not previously painted, then it should not be painted. Is that correct? That's correct. Right. So um, I think that you know we could we could follow those standards and, and say that uh, there it, it there appears to be one section. I don't know if we can all agree <laughs> on that. That appears was never painted, and maybe we can zoom in on a photo and yes, 
Ms. Yeah, Thatcher. I think I can shed a little light on that. This is speculation. I don't know it for certain, but yeah. I've heard anecdotally that that section of the wall somebody crashed into sure. and they rebuilt it. <laughs> so that may be um, new old. Wait, where did we go here? That may be. Uh, sorry. Um, new old bricks on the corner of the building. And I think that that may be why they're not painted. Okay, well, it, these guys right here, right? Is it, is it two bricks wide at its widest or two and a half? Uh, well, it's a full brick deep and then a half a brick. Yeah. It's kind of hard to tell the way the right. bricks it's, are half. It's not painted. like a straight line for the whole way, but yeah. it appears to be two bricks in some locations. Yeah. Um, Yeah, I know that this cornice was replaced after a bad accident. Yeah, well, that and makes sense why it would just be the first floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. are you saying that since that's not historic brick, then we should paint well, it or we? I mean, it's probably still old brick. They may have just salvaged yeah. it from someplace else because it matches the rest of the building. Yeah. Um, I'm just offering an explanation. Right. Why? Yeah. But it may that not be historic. That, that bollard looks unpainted. a little bent anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, what? it's there, but yeah. What Commissioner I, I Fortner, just sorry, one, one sec, Commissioner Kondo, did you, I didn't hear your comment if you made one, Commissioner Fortner. Yeah, I was saying it wasn't necessarily historically unpainted. Yeah. Right. That is, that is uh, an unknown. Right. Commissioner Kihano. Um, I, I was just going to say that it, it, it does provide um, a little bit of a tolerance. You know, if you take that paint, if you were to come all the way to the, um, end of the wall, you know, that's, that's not going to be a sharp corner of the brick. So, mm. you know, kind of a... So you could do a nice line. Yeah, so if you, the if you set it back, it. Okay. you know, a brick, or if, you know, maybe, I think the parapet wall at the top, if you take that line down, maybe it's a logical approach and gives you some tolerance there with the paint. But um, I think I, I have no issue with painting the, the remaining portion of the wall as it's clearly been painted multiple times. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, well, can we amend the motion to say no painting? Uh, I mean, I, are we comfortable with uh, the first uh, two bricks, at least two bricks back or something like that from the front facade? If, that, and then if they choose to paint, I mean, that's, we so, don't, that's kind there, of a it's, There's still the condition of they have to, uh, they will have to fix the mortar, then to they paint. can paint, and then this will say, well, let's not paint the first two bricks back because it's not painted. And are you proposing the first two, just the first floor, or all the way up? I mean, because there's paint all the way up yeah. on the second floor. That's true does look like there's some sort of something, but there's clearly paint there also. Mm -hmm. um, I would say just go all the way up with it, but uh, it seems like that's what the, unless the art, I mean, yeah, I don't know. That's a, that's a great question. What do, you, what do you think, Commissioner Fortner? Well, I think if we're, yeah, I'm not sure I'm, I, need to commit to saving that unpainted brick on the first floor. I think given that they took the second floor painting all the way to the edge, that probably that first floor had been painted to the edge too. Okay. And then that, that sort of clean edge is less consistent with the rest of the building than it is anything, you know. Well, I guess I, I have some concern of maybe paint, you know, the execution of the paint maybe turning the corner a sure. little bit. Yeah. Um, but it's also nice to have kind of the thickness of that front brick wall have a little bit of a return. I agree completely. Um, to show the depth of the, the historic facade. I think that would be appropriate. If you look at the full height image, it's definitely like less paint at that front little bit there. And I don't know, I, I think going all the way up would be more in line with the standards than otherwise. Um, okay, so they just can't put new paint. So they don't have to do anything to the second story first brick course. 
but leave it the way it is. So leave that first what, course and a half from the corner as is, other than any repairs that have to be done to the mortar. And the rest can be painted. As right, I suppose the way the motion's written, if they're not painting it, then they don't yeah. have to repair behind the paint, right? right? So. But we're saying if you paint, you have to repair the mortar, and you can only paint from a brick and a half from the front corner, or you have to leave an unpainted, is that yeah, what we're saying? Brick and a half. Do we have a photo showing the top? Showing what? Uh, no, the top parapet edge. There we go. So you're seeing is that the thickness of the parapet should um, be a... If that defines Is like the, the thickness of the wall. And if you don't paint that portion, that shows there's some thickness to that wall. Yeah. What are, thought, what are your thoughts on that? I think that makes more sense. That's, that makes sense to me. So well, it's an easier definition to yeah. follow. Yeah. Right, <laughs> thickness of the parapet. Yeah. Okay. So Commissioner Fortner will amend the motion here. Okay. Let me see here. Okay, so we're going to say to paint a portion of the west elevation with the exception of the front <laughs> wall, the width of the parapet. Sounds good. Okay. Support, okay, that was amended by Commissioner Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. Uh, any other discussion on this motion? Um, it looks like not. So are we ready to vote? Yes. Okay, let's vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, say no. Okay, the motion carries. Um, please get permits before doing their work. Uh, thank you very much, Jason and Andrew. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on here to, we're done with unfinished business. We'll move on to hearings. We'll go to F1, and we'll go to Ms. Thatcher for the staff report. All right, F1 is A11 Catherine in the old Fourth Ward Historic District. Um, the staff report is misdated. It should say January 13th, 2022. The site's located at the northwest corner of North Fifth Avenue and Cath. No, this is not right. I got the wrong one. Never mind. Hang on, I gotta find the right report. Okay, this is a large two and a half story gable fronter that features an inset front porch with a pedimented roof, fieldstone foundation, gable corner returns, attic wall dormers on both sides, and a first floor bump out on the east elevation. Uh, the applicant is seeking HTC approval to install sashes for nine wood windows that were removed and replaced with vinyl windows without a certificate of appropriateness or building permits. Uh, the windows are replicas of the historic windows that were removed and would replace the modern windows currently installed. So you can see here, let me get down to a better picture. Um, these are uh, photos from the application package. Uh, they're numbered. One is the front first floor window. It's currently two windows mulled together, but that is was originally a single one over one large double hung window. Um, two is over here on the right. Three is a, a fixed glass window next to the front door. Four, five, and six are on these elevations on the second floor. Seven is around the corner on the second floor. And eight and nine are the attic windows that, that were originally two windows. Just, uh, I confirm that the windows were previously one over one with the exception of this one that was just a fixed square. Um, uh, on Google Street View, this is a 2018 view. 
kind of hard to get at. If you look at all of the different years of Google Street View, though, you can eventually see each of the windows. Uh, you just have to do some digging. But they were all uh, single sashes over single sashes, not divided lights. There is a plan showing uh, where the windows are on the house. And um, the applicant had a similar application for a house on North Ingalls where he had to um, hire uh, Dustin Schultz to recreate the historic wood windows. And um, uh, fortunately, the, the um, uh, the, the router uh, bit, I'm not sure if that's the right name, but it has the same uh, mutton profile, the bit that, that uh, Dustin made um, for the windows on North Ingalls, um, and they went out and confirmed this to make sure that this was close enough to the mutton pattern on uh, the original windows that are left on this house. Uh, I should have pointed out that uh, most of the rest of the windows on the house are uh, pre-1945 windows. So it was pretty easy to be able to compare the mutton pattern. Um, well, there is no mutton, but to, to compare the, the profile, the window profile, to, um, to the uh, um, historic windows. Though now I'm realizing that if there are no muttons on the uh, historic windows, why we need a drawing of a mutton. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit slow on that today, but um, I'm sure Chris will be able to explain that to us when we get that far, Mr. Heaton. So right now, um, from Ann Arbor City Code, uh, it says when work has been done upon a resource without a permit and the commission finds that the work does not qualify for a certificate of appropriateness, the commission may require an owner to restore the resource to the condition the resource was in before the inappropriate work. From the Secretary of Interior Standards, number six, says deteriorated historic features will be repaired rather than replaced, where the severity of deterioration requires replacement of a distinctive feature. The new feature will match the old in design, color, texture, and where possible materials. Replacement of missing features will be substantiated by documentary and physical evidence. From the guidelines for windows, it's recommended to conduct an in-depth survey of the conditions of existing windows early in rehabilitation planning so that repair and upgrading methods and possible replacement options can be fully explored. It's not recommended to change the number, location, size, or glazing pattern of windows through cutting new openings, blocking in windows, installing replacement sash, which does not fit the historic window opening. Also not recommended is removing or radically changing windows which are important in defining the historic character of the building so that as a result the character is diminished. It's also not recommended to change the historic appearance of windows through the use of inappropriate designs, materials, finishes, or colors, which noticeably change the sash, depth of reveal, and mutton configuration, the reflectivity and color of the glazing, or the appearance of the frame. It's also not recommended to replace windows solely because of peeling paint, broken glass, stuck sash, and high air infiltration. These conditions in themselves are no indication that windows are beyond repair. All right, let me get back up here to our photos. So you can see that the, the, there are vinyl replacement windows that have a three over one um, pattern um, that does not match the originals. And staff is suggesting a timeline of eight months to manufacture and install the replacement windows, which uh, is included in the suggested motion. So that completes staff's report. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee, and so we'll give our report right now. Um, well, yeah, I, I just I agree with what's been said by staff so far. I mean that. There's really, I don't have anything to add to the report. What about you, Mr. Yeah, those, those are vinyl replacement windows. <laughs> yes, okay, very good. Um, so would the applicant please unmute your microphone? Uh, you've got your video on already, thank you. Um, could you please provide your name and address for the record? And you've got five minutes anyway, so please uh, let us know if you have anything to add, thank you. Sure, thank you. Uh, my name is Chris Heaton. My address is 337 East Huron Street, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48104. And uh, one of the things I wanted to say first was thank you for offering the Zoom alternative. Um, that was important to me personally, and I imagine important to other people too. So thank you for providing it tonight. Uh, I 
I, um, I have worked closely with Jill on this at this property and the previously mentioned property too. And I agree with her depiction of the situation exactly, including her comment about the cross section of the mutton pattern from that was taken from the other building. That was a drawing that we produced on the on the previous building. Um, what you can I, th I think what you can infer from that drawing is that half of that profile represents the outer edges or the inside edges of the sashes. So um, where it, whereas a mutton pattern would be um, you know, a two-sided profile, the inside edges of the sashes would be half of that. Does that, does that make sense? Everyone clear? Okay. Okay. Anything else, Chris? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. I just, I just wanted to confirm though, that my, my depiction of those, of that profile make, you know, that that makes sense. Thank you. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Okay, um, I, I just have one that I, I hate to ask here, but you know, we, we've had the, the project on Ingalls and now we have this on Catherine. I'm just curious, like, are there other uh, windows that, that we're gonna be seeing that are gonna be vinyl that shouldn't be, that have been replaced without uh, application that, that we're gonna be seeing from you? No. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and that puts us at ease. So with that, let's, um, let's open the public hearing. Uh, this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes. This is 811 Catherine Street. And uh, public comment may be made by calling the number on the screen and hitting star nine or in the Zoom screen, you raise your hand. So we'll go to Alexis now and find out if anyone's here for public comment. Uh, no new participants have joined, but to our existing, as always, you are free to raise your hand uh, on Zoom and participate if you like. I am not seeing any hands raised. Um, I will let you know if that changes, but I feel you may move on. Thank you very much, Alexis. Okay, um, so would any commissioners like to make a motion on this application? Commissioner Quijano, please. I move that the commission approve the application at 811 Catherine Street, the contributing property in the old fourth ward historic district to replace nine windows with replica wood windows as proposed. The commission finds that the replacement of the original windows was inappropriate because it did not meet the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standard number six and the guidelines for windows and energy retrofitting. The owner shall remove the replacement windows and install replica wood windows within eight months of this decision date. Support. That was moved by Commissioner Cahano and supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the motion? Just Commissioner Cahano? Just that it's an unfortunate to have to have an application like this, um, but I appreciate uh, the effort being made to, to recreate the, the, wood, the new replica wood windows. Um, so thank you. Very good. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any further discussion, and this is... Um, Straightforward, I think, at this point. So let's just go to a vote. All those in favor of the motion, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, your application has been approved. Uh, please note you must apply for any uh, required permits from the city before beginning. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Take care. Okay, so now we are moving on. Uh, F2. Ms. Thatcher, please. Now we're at 301 North Fifth Avenue in the Old Fourth Ward Historic District. 
Uh, the site is at the northwest corner of North 5th and Catherine. It's part of a larger parcel that also has frontage on Detroit Street. Um, and it's a two-story brick Italianate barn that features a wood hayloft door in the second story, double hung windows with stone, stone sills and brick arched window hoods accentuated with stone and bears the date 1887 in the front gable. It's known as Baumgardner's Barn. It's the only remaining structure from John Baumgardner's Marble Works, which specialized in tombstones, sidewalks, and sills and lintels for buildings. The building later became the horse stable for the Worcester Dairy, and in the eight, 1950s was used for a used car dealership. In 1978, the garage door on the east elevation was replaced with a door and a window after a car crashed into the southeast corner of the building. Uh, and on September, in September of 2012, the HCC approved a sign mounted on the northeast corner of the building for the previous tenant, Jessica's Apothecary. The applicant is seeking HCC approval to install a neon sign on the southeast corner of the building. That's the building that you see, uh, that's the corner that you see in this photograph. Um, here's the front of the building facing Fifth Avenue. You can see this is where the garage, the barn door was that was infilled with a door and a window. Looks like this used to be a person door that went all the way down to the ground. But very cool, very cool building. The house across the street on Catherine was also built by John Baumgartner. If you're ever out there, you should really stop and admire the, the, the similarly elaborate um, brick and stonework on that house. Here's the side facing Catherine. Commissioner Rockland there is counting bricks for us to figure out the proportions of the sign. Just looking down the sidewalks, there are no projecting signs um, on the Detroit Street filling station, which is this building down here. It's on the same parcel or looking up toward Carytown. This is one of the Carytown banners on a light post off in the distance. The, this is the final design uh, and the packet has been updated with it. It is a 35 inch uh, diameter circle with uh, neon accents in the circles and the star and the musical note. A little north uh, uh, header on the top, five inches tall. This, this is not illuminated. Um, and then a compass rose pattern. It would be mounted at the corner. The, the rest of the drawings are, are, are um, slightly different from this one. So this is the final design that, that you would actually be approving um, that was submitted last by the applicant. Um, you can see that this design is a little bit different and the width is a little bit wider, um, but this one's gone a little bit smaller. It's 10 feet off of the ground, which is great because it means that most people can't jump up and hit it. Uh, it's mounted on the corner of the building. Um, I believe it's using through bolts. They are mounted in the mortar joints and that's specified on here. The drawings were updated to show that an electrical box the junction box would be right on the sign. Um, and I'm not sure that I can read this message on the left, uh, but it is a 35 inch diameter and it's 18 inches in width. And you can see the drawing here of that, of that width and um, where the neon would be and where the electricity is coming in. Um, from the Secretary of the Interior's standards, the ones that best apply are uh, number nine, which I'll read to you. It says, new additions, exterior alterations, or related new construction shall not destroy historic materials that characterize the property. The new work shall be differentiated from the old, shall be compatible with the massing size scale and architectural features to protect the historic integrity of the property and its environment. And from the Ann Arbor Historic District uh, Design Guidelines, for signs, uh, it's appropriate to install signage that's compatible in size, style, material, and appearance to the historic resource and district, and to install signage that's subordinate to the overall building composition. Uh, it's not appropriate to install signs that have interior illumination or are backlit. So this sign, um, it, it doesn't meet the, the design guidelines for a pedestrian scale sign, but it's not meant to be a pedestrian scale sign. It's a little bit bigger. It's going to be the only signage on the building. It's located up higher than a pedestrian scale sign would be. Um, and uh, it's in pretty much the same location as the previous tenant sign and with the exception of the neon it could have been approved by staff since it was actually a little bit smaller than that sign so because there's neon it's coming to you um, commissioners for your consideration and staff does recommend approval of this application thank you
Thank you very much. So Commissioner Fortner and myself are on the review committee. Um, Commissioner Fortner, do you have a report? Um, not much to add to the staff findings. Uh, the being on site with the measurements, it did seem to be in keeping with the scale of the building. Um, and it, it seems to have about as small, an Im the mounting will have as small an impact on the building as you could have with a sign, um, particularly with electricity. Okay. Very good, thank you. Um, I agree with what was said in the report and I have nothing to add, so we will go um, on to talk to the applicant now. So will the applicant please unmute your microphone, turn on your video if possible, and provide your name and, rec and address for the record, and you'll have up to five minutes to add anything you'd like to the staff report or review committee report. Mr. Chalou is just getting into the meeting here, so give him, we'll give, give him one minute. There's a little bit of a lag. But Mark, whenever you're ready, you can uh, turn on your audio and your video. Thank you. Mark, if you can hear me, go ahead and turn on your audio and your video. Hello. There we go. We can hear you. Hi, right. how are you? Hi, good evening, everyone. Thanks for your time this evening. My name is Mark Blue. I'm the owner of Blue Designs. Uh, we've been installing neon signs in Ann Arbor for over 40 years. Um, some of the iconic ones are Zingerman's Roadhouse, uh, Ann Arbor T-shirt, Fleetwood Diners, just to name a few. I really like this particular design. It doesn't have any copy on it. It really uh, reflects a more of an artistic aspect than uh, really a commercial sign. Uh, the compass rose colors and the colors that we're using for the neon tubing, um, they blend really well together. And I think it's really going to be this highlight upstairs. Uh, um, there's going to be, a, it's called the North Star Lounge. That was the whole reason besides the little N and the compass rose, meaning north, uh, having the compass rose, the significance of a compass. So it's north, uh, they're gonna have a, oh, like a folk uh, music hall up there. It's probably gonna hold about 50, 60 people. And there's say, Phyllis, the same person that owns the Detroit uh, uh, filling station as well. She's the one that's uh, um, doing this venture. So it's a nice little upstairs space that's uh, all natural brick on the inside. And I know you had a question regarding that uh, uh, one drawing where it um, there's a, a, what we call a piece of seal tight. It's a sealed tight uh, uh, electrical uh, tubing that is waterproof and we're going to run that line from the junction box on the sign down the bracket of the sign and into the building through via the uh, border joint. Great. Anything else, Mark? No. Does anybody have any questions for me? I, um, I think it'll be really a nice little adder there over uh, in that side of town. Very nice. Thank you for those comments. Um, I'm not seeing any questions for you at the moment. So we're going to move on to the public hearing for this item. This is 301 North 5th Avenue. So that here's an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes. So please uh, raise your hand in the Zoom room or hit star nine on your phone to let us know if you'd like to speak. Alexis, do we have anyone? Um, it doesn't look like it. There are no new joiners, if that's a word. 
Um, as always, I will offer anyone a chance to use the raise hand feature to speak. Um, I will also take this opportunity um, to remind anyone who's an attendee, if you will become a panelist, um, there will be a little um, message window that pops up and you have to accept the invitation to become a panelist. Um, I can't do that for you. I can only send you an invitation. Um, no one has raised their hand, so I um, would advise you can um, uh, close this public hearing. Thanks, Alexis. Okay, so I will now close the public hearing of portion and I ask a commissioner to make a motion on this application. Commissioner Porter. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 301 North 5th Avenue, a contributing property in the old 4th Ward Historic District to install a new neon business sign mounted in mortar joints as proposed. The work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the rest of the building and the surrounding area and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for signs and the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation and Guidelines for Rehabilitating Historic Buildings, in particular Standard 9 and the guidelines for storefronts. Support. That was moved by Commissioner Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, um, I'll just say that the, uh, I really appreciate the, there's an illustration in the packet that shows exactly how it's getting mounted in the mortar joints and they've got like a 50% transparency going on where you can see the mounting mechanism and then also you can see the brick behind it and, and really letting us know that, um, I don't see Mark anymore on the screen there, but that they really understand uh, what we're asking for here. And again, the, the junction box uh, being mounted on the sign itself seems like a very clever way to solve that issue. Um, so very nice application and it will go to a vote. Uh, all those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. The motion carries. Your application has been approved. Please note that you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. Thank you. So now we'll move on to F3, Ms. Thatcher. Oops, I'm sorry, went too fast. F3 is at 1026 West Liberty Street in the Old West Side Historic District. Uh, this very cool one and a half story craftsman home features three and four over one windows bracketed eaves and gables, stucco on the first floor and shingles on the dormers, gabled on the front and shed on the rear, and side gable ends and a front porch with stuccoed half columns supporting pairs of square half columns, wood guardrails, and interesting vertical slat eave trim in the front porch gable. The west elevation features a red brick chimney and a shallow pop-out with its own gable roof. And the contributing garage behind the house was constructed before 1925 and features front gable trim that matches that of the house. The house is on the north side of West Liberty between 8th Street and Eberwhite Boulevard, and the applicant is seeking HTC approval to construct a two-story rear addition, replace concrete front stairs and railings with wood, infill a side door on the east elevation, and install a new window in a new opening on the first floor east elevation. All right, moving through the photos. Um, here's, take a look here, so the front porch uh, currently has concrete steps and um, iron railings, guardrails, those would be, both would be replaced by wood. That would be much more appropriate in keeping with the house. Here on the side of the house you can see this side door. It does look like it's probably an original door. Here it is. Um, it's a typical type found on the Old West side. The strange thing about it is that it's not on the driveway side. This is the neighbor's driveway. This house's driveway is on the left side of the photo. So it's not like you can use it to get in and out of the, you know, to, to get out of the garage from the driveway or something like that, or the, the basement from the driveway. Um, it's, it's a very awkward placement. Um, it does have a, you know, they've, they've, they've put a little pad there so that they could get in and out of it if they needed to. Um, this is the back of the house, extremely overexposed from our site visit. I think I've got a better one in here too. But you can see that um, these are original windows. This one has been replaced with a metal casement. I'm not sure why or where that came from, but 
um, seems likely that somebody had an extra window and that's where they put it. This is not uh, uh, any historic opening here. Some work has probably been done on the back. It would be unusual for this um, whole um, <clears throat> elevation to just not have any other openings on the first floor, but uh, this is stucco right now. And this is the this is the little cute side gable with a shallow pop out um, with this pair of windows in it. And there's the red brick chimney there on the right. Um, I include this photo only because it's right next door and it's it's similar uh, in design to the one that we're looking at in that it's stepped into the corners, it's two stories, it pops out the back, it steps in on the side, and then there's a little porch on the other side. Don't usually show other um, projects um, for comparison, but I just wanted you to see how something similar worked on the house right next door. So here's a better picture of the back of the house, the north elevation. There's a little deck here that would go away. Um, better pictures of the front porch and handrail. Existing east elevation. You can see the stucco finish. It's a, it's a very rough, thick stucco. And then the, the basement wall, uh, the foundation wall is parged and smooth. There's that door again. Um, the proposal is to remove this door and infill it with stucco and foundation and to install a new window in a new opening about here at a similar height to this pair of windows. I'll show you drawings of that in a second. Uh, materials are proposed to be smooth face composite shake shingle siding and composite trim and composite lattice. This is all for the addition, not for the front porch. Um, composite, I think, is a perfectly appropriate material when you get to the back of a house. Uh, Velux skylight, I'll show you that in a second. So here's where the new two-story framed addition sits. It is inset from the back corner here. I think this is just an error on the drawing. I'm not sure what this little guy sticking out here is, but um, you can see uh, this is where the, the door would be infilled, and this is a new window in a new opening. And this is a new little side porch next to the driveway. First floor demo plan right now uh, in the kitchen there's a very strange staircase that goes up several stairs. I think it's actually from this way, from the foyer. It goes up several stairs, and then it just stops. <laughs> it's walled off. Um, not sure why that's there or where it used to lead to. Uh, the new plan is here. That would all be taken out. You can see where the basement door is infilled. The new window goes here. We've got an inset here. Um, this one's not dimension, but I think the dimension is on here somewhere. And we've got a new living room and mudroom and a covered porch back here on the side. The nice thing about the first floor is that there are no historic features at all on that wall. If there ever were any, they've already been removed. This is the second floor. Uh, let me get my bearings here a second. You can see, so this is, this is there's a large dormer. This dotted line here is the, is the dormer roof. Um, and these windows would obviously be demolished and lost um, to the addition, but this window would also be removed and slid over a little bit because they, yeah, here we go, because they need a larger window that will meet egress requirements because this is becoming a bedroom right next to it. So here's that inset on this side. All right, here's the demo plan, getting rid of the front steps, side door, and it's putting in a new window opening. Not really much happening on the west side. These are the new exterior elevations. You can see that there's composite shake shingle on this new addition. It, it comes straight off of the shed uh, dormer that's on the back. It ties in with the same eave height. Um, that wall is inset to the depth of the dormer. And on the other side, this is the new work here. On the other side, it has an additional little mini shed roof for this inset here, um, where it's, 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 it's a little bit shallower, doesn't go all the way back. So they've just put a shed metal roof um, to fill in that, that smaller area. It'll make more sense in just a second. 
This is the existing sh cedar shake shingle siding. And here's a new deck, um, a new entry porch rather. Composite balusters, railing, and, um, and composite lattice. Here's the demo plan on the back. And here's what the back would now look like. We've got, this is the inset from the historic corner of the house. Here's the existing dormer. So the part of the dormer that would be um, preserved is this piece right here and this side wall. Um, this, the, the, the addition is finished in stucco, like the rest of the house. Uh, this does not concern me a whole lot because the upstairs is not going to be stucco. And really the proportions are different. Um, uh, the windows are going to be modern. The foundation is going to be different. Um, I, I think it's okay to match something, just not all of the things. And here are some renderings of what the addition will look like. All right, let me go back up here to some of these. From the um, Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation, standards 2, 9, and 10, best apply. I've read all of those to you, as well as, as the um, guidelines for new addition, district or neighborhood setting, and building site and the Ann Arbor District Design Guidelines for all additions and um, for new construction. So there was a point that I need to make to you here as soon as I can find it. Um, the footprint and floor area table are in the staff report. Um, this is a 49% increase in the footprint of the house and a 50% increase in the area. Um, it's a pretty big addition. I think it looks bigger because uh, they made a, a, a valiant attempt to save this back corner of the existing shed dormer to make sure that a record of it is maintained. By doing that, they pushed all of the work over and it made it a little bit deeper um, than it otherwise would have been. The rear addition will be built on a crawl space. The roof ridge is slightly lower than that of the historic house. And I think that I've gone over everything else here. Um, staffs, one concern about the door that's to be infilled on the side, which would be right here, um, is that, uh, and I haven't talked to the architect about that, uh, about this, what I'm about to say since I wrote this in the staff report. Um, but I, I understand the need for to free up this room for the kitchen. It is a superfluous door since it's on the wrong side of the house. Um, but to maintain a record of that door would be very helpful, this one. And if they could inset the infill by about two inches, then just like on those historic downtown buildings that we were just looking at, uh, it would very clearly show you that there's a building there. I'm sorry, that there was a door opening there um, that no longer exists. Um, and it looks like it won't conflict with the new window that's next to it and not overlapping with it. Uh, so staff does suggest in the motion uh, that this is a condition of approval to be inset the wall infill by two inches to maintain a record of the door's previous existence. That's it for me. Uh, staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee, and so we'll give our report now. Um, so I'll begin. This is a... Um, it's it's a, a great house on the old west side it, it's it's i think unique i mean it, it's a craftsman house and there's not like i guess there are several craftsman houses, but it's not like seems like the most common also with the stucco it just seems like it has details that aren't as common and other uh, homes that we've uh, often look at and there are many many character defining features on this home there seems to be gables everywhere you look and um, there's uh, gable dormers, especially uh, on the front, and, and then uh, gables and gables on both sides. 
Um, I will say, though, in the, the rear elevation is um, very plain, especially after you've looked at the rest of the house, all three sides. And um, clearly there's been some work back there that maybe made it even more plain and uh, a little weird with the, the, the metal window, especially. Um, now there is the shed dormer on the back, and obviously we've talked about that already. So um, you see in the application, you know, an attempt to uh, save uh, at least one corner of that shed dormer so we know it is there. Uh, you can like maybe almost see it from the street. You know, like the, the, the rear shed dormer, if you're really looking back there, um, you can kind of catch the corners, uh, but there's so there's there's a lot of other stuff happening, you know, before you get there. It's not like your eye from the sidewalk is sort of drawn back there as like, oh, that's that's the the character of the house is is that shed dormer back there. Um, you know, you, the probably the first thing you notice is the concrete and metal stair, if anything, you know, and so by removing that and 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 making that more appropriate, I think that is going to have. A uh, big impact on this house, um, Commissioner Fortner. Anything to add? No, I I agree. I think the <laughs> the front the major impact of the historic features will be the steps and the railing, um, and that uh, you know sort of like keeping the or maintaining the impression of the door <laughs> that's being removed. They've sort of maintained the impression of the dormer in the back with the uh, the one um, side remaining. Um, where it is now. Thank you. I, I, I guess I'll add that the um, there is uh, a decent sized backyard back there. So we mentioned it's a, it's a large rear addition. Um, there's a garage that you saw on the site plan, and then there's there's room next to the garage. Uh, so there will still be a yard. You saw the addition on one side. Uh, on the other side, there's there's no addition at the moment. But then two houses down on that side. The home does go quite far back as well, um, so the, this configuration won't be unique um, to to the view shed in, in the back. Okay. Um, so, would the applicant? Uh, I see you on the screen. Would you please unmute your microphone and um, state your name and address for the record? And then let us know if there's anything you'd like to add uh, to the to what you've heard so far. Hi, my name is Emily Hewitt, and I reside at 1026 West Liberty Street, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, Lisa Cauley, and I reside at the same address. Um, and uh, nothing to add, but um, we'll defer to our architect if uh, he has anything that uh, that he wants to address at this point. I'm uh, good for now, but I'm available for any questions that anyone needs. Okay, can can you respond to the added bit in the motion that that uh, staff hadn't talked to you about that where there we were requesting that the door that you're removing be inset two inches? A absolutely. Um, I anticipated that and uh, know that is kind of a, um, a good nod to the past um, to show that. So yeah, we intend, I mean, there'll be some detailing on how we figure that out. But um, I think that as long as we don't get too close with the window, I believe luckily we, we don't have to deal with um, any window trim. Um, I need to see that picture again <laughs> before I say that. But uh, it'll be close, and if we have to adjust that window, the size of it or whatnot, to, to get that to work with the inset of the old door, um, we'll accommodate. Very good. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions for the applicant? Um, just a clarification. Yeah. I'm trying to pull up one of the new exterior elevations. A 2.0, I believe, in the packet. So it's the, that'd be the east elevation. I got my directions Sheet. correct. Um, where the the addition is joining the um, existing sh shed dormer in the back, and yeah, right where that cursor is, the joint. So as labeled, it's 
showing that that whole surface is the is the new siding. So are you indicating that yeah. the existing wood siding at the dormer will be replaced? Uh, that's a, a great question, um, and we've debated that. Um, since the exposure um, with the hardy shake shingle is going to be slightly off, and you don't have that adjustment um, to get. And, and I don't want to, you know, we don't want to replicate verbatim uh, what's there. Mm -hmm. um, but to have a, the only way to do that would be to put a trim board on there. And there are no trim boards where the, uh, at the corners on this house. So I believe we would have to remove that upper portion, uh, the little pie shaped area, um, and go new there. Um, so it all blends in. And, unless, you know, uh, some sort of, line of demarcation where we could have um, the new and the old while we retain the old. We'd, we'd be also up for that. Um, it'd be the only place on the house that would have a piece of trim of that nature. Right, right. because down below on the first floor, you're able to offset from the, or inset from the corner. Correct, the and, that, and that is stucco. Um, but yeah, on the other side, it, exactly, um, yeah. that um, it's offset, so. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, you do have the, like the fascia boards, so it's not like there's no trim on the house. I mean, I see what you're saying. There's no trim in the siding. Right, right. there's no corner boards, correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but you do have the fascia boards and maybe a piece of trim would allow you to keep what's there, mm -hmm. keep more of what's there. Sure, sure, it keeps more of what's there and we're agreeable to that. Um, I don't think that this is, there's no, uh, um, I'm not gonna contest that at all. I, I think that that's probably, made, you know, to keep more of the, the historic fabric um, and at a quick glance, you, you would see new and old and you would know distinctly what's, what's different. Whereas mm -hmm. running the composite all the way up in there could potentially, um, you know, Make it look like we're that shed dormer, at least when that elevation um, is newer. So we're, we're fine with that if we, if we want to put a, a trim piece there. Okay. Great. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. So seeing none, we will open up the public hearing for this item. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about this application at 1026 West Liberty. Um, so please raise your hand in the Zoom room or hit star nine on your phone if you're calling in. And we'll go to Alexis to find out if we have anyone for the public hearing. Um, no newcomers have joined our meeting, um, but in fairness, anyone would like to please, please use the raise your hand feature and I will promote you. Uh, no one has raised their hand, so I feel that you can move on. Thank you, Alexis. I will now close the public hearing portion for this application, and I'll ask if any commissioners would like to make a motion on this item. I will. Who do we got? Commissioner Keanu, please. I've got to get to the page here. Yep. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 1026 West Liberty Street, the contributing property in the old West Side Historic District, to construct a two-story rear addition, replace concrete front stairs and railings with wood, infill a side door on the east elevation, and install a new window in a new opening on the first floor east elevation on the condition that the door infill is recessed two inches. As conditioned, the proposed work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for additions and new construction and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for district, neighborhood, building site, new additions, and windows. Support. That was moved by Commissioner Quijano and seconded by Commissioner White. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, oh, yes, Commissioner well, Quijano. Unless there are new topics, kind of that, I'd like to continue that discussion about the 
delineation on the addition and yes, the it's it's a good point that you brought up. So let's let's hash that out. I mean, I, I agree. There's there's an example of corner boards, but it would be nice um, to delineate that, especially because there is no change in plane being proposed there. I would just say, like, I agree with you 100%, and I understand why maybe, like, a, a someone who's working outside of a historic district would just say, just remove it. It's going to be better, basically, if you just make it all new. Right. But yeah. this is in a historic district, and our standards say that if if something is there, it should remain, or you re if it's deteriorated, you replace it in kind. And this is really neither one of those things. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like the application does need to find a way to keep that on the building, keep, keep that uh, little pie piece mm -hmm. of um, existing shing, uh, shake on the, on the second floor there on the side of the dormer. And so it sounded like Mike was proposing a piece of vertical trim to delineate it. And um, as an architect, he was thinking, that, you know, rightly, there's no vertical trim on, on right. this house. I, I should not do that. Uh, but it sounds like in this case, that is at least uh, fulfilling our standards here. So um, if you're amenable to that, which it sounded like you were, then let's just um, move forward with that. Do you, do you think we should put that in the motion? Is that what I, you're well, suggesting? Well, I'm just wondering if, we, if that's needed or if there's anything that would contradict that's sort of a change. But, uh, I don't know. Do you feel we need to? I, 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 I think that we've got the architect here. The architect's saying that, that that's what's going to happen. So um, I've got that on record. I think, yeah. Yeah. We're OK? OK. We'll do that. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Very good. All right. Are there? Uh, it, any other uh, questions at the moment or, or comments on this, uh, I should say, on this application? I, I think that there's, there's certainly a lot that's being proposed here, but I think with it, we don't have a lot of comments and questions because the, um, the application was quite thorough. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very clear that you've been working with staff here and, and you have knowledge of the standards so that you know uh, uh, that you're proposing something that, that is in line with the standards. And I think that's why we're all kind of feeling comfortable with this application, even even though, like I said, it is um, quite detailed. So um, without any further ado, we will move to a vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Your motion passes. It carries, so the application has been approved. Uh, please note, you must apply for any required permits from the city before beginning your project. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you, Joe. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. OK, and so we will move on now to F4, Ms. Thatcher. All right, now we're at 1223 Traverse Street in the Broadway Historic District. This is the circa 1840s Jacob Armstrong House. It's a 1.5 story Greek revival in the rare hen and chicks form. It may have been moved from another site on Traver. It was first owned by Jacob Armstrong, who moved to Ann Arbor from New York. Armstrong, his sons, and grandsons all worked as carpenters in Ann Arbor. In March of 2021, the HDC determined that the single car garage on the site is a contributing historic structure. It's on the west side of Traver, north of Bowen, and south of Pear. And the applicant is seeking HDC approval to replace and raise the house's foundation 16 inches above grade, install two new glass block windows and new openings, I'm sorry, one in a new opening, but the wall will be replaced, so they're essentially new openings. Install three egress windows with wells on a modern addition and construct a 150 square foot addition to enclosed stairs to access the expanded basement. All right, here's the front of the house. It has two front doors. This is just, it's just cute as a button. I just love this house and its neighbor next door. <laughs> Um, here I am standing on the street. There's no sidewalk here, but you can see that there's a four foot um, change in elevation here, change in grade. Um, it's a little steep hike up to the, the flat front yard. And if you look closely, you'll see that the current porch, uh, front porch, is, is 
is on the ground pretty much. It looks like there's some, some concrete poured. Um, I don't know if that's under the entire porch or if that's just um, around the edges, but uh, it's, it's a very low to the ground house. Now we're looking around the left side of the house. I think that's the south elevation. Um, the original part of the house here has the shutters. So this is one of the chicks and these are the shutters. This is um, um, a more modern addition um, off the back and then this is a most modern addition back here. I'm actually not exactly positive when this section was built because there was an addition behind the house in 1947 on the aerials that I'll show you. Just not sure if it went this far or not. It does have a replaced foundation. Um, no matter what era it's from, it's, that's modern. This is where one of the glass block windows would go. There's a little well here with a grate in it. It's not a window, it's just a metal grate. Uh, and that is on the historic part of the house. And again, look at how low, there's just, just a few inches here between the ground and, um, and that sill down there. Here are a couple photos from two different parts of the house. This is kind of typical. Um, you can see that that critter wire has been put up to try to keep critters out, but it's just a rubble wall. Here's another place where some concrete has been sort of slapped in as mortar um, and, you know, lots of dirt, lots of little stones. Now we've walked around the back of the house, uh, and this is the junction between that large-ish addition room on the back and um, uh, an older addition that went across the rear of the house. And this is, corner was just sort of filled in to um, make a way to get into the, the, the new and the old sections of the house. The, the addition would go on this spot right here. It's inset from the corner on, on this side, on the left. And uh, it, it's not very big. It's only 150 square feet, so it comes out maybe 10 feet uh, and, and, and sheds off of um, the roof, the, the, the new roof for the addition. Here I'm just standing back farther in the yard to show you what the back of the house looks like. The three window wells that are proposed to be put uh, in the new basement, this is all currently on a slab, uh, are, on, are all on this new part of the house. Here's a 1947 photo. It's, it's this one right here in the middle. Here's the hen, and here are the chicks on the sides, and here's the addition that went straight across the back. Um, that's the one where I wasn't sure if it went farther out or not. It looks like maybe it didn't. Mm -hmm. And then the new square addition is off the back here. So here's a plot plan showing old house, old addition. Aha, uh, very good. The applicant has delineated it here. This bit seems to be more new um, and this is the newest section. This is where the addition is proposed to go, to fill in that corner. This is the existing foundation plan. We've got a rubble foundation on the oldest part of the house. Um, there's an oval here because the walls on the inside are kind of circular. Uh, there's a couple of pictures in the packet um, showing the, the, the stones just piled up, but it is kind of rounded walls in there. This is all currently uh, on a concrete block crawl space. This is all proposed, all of this is proposed to be dug down um, to give them additional living space. Oh, here's the pictures from the inside. How cool is that? Not super usable though. Um, here's a, a picture, sorry, it's kind of shrunk down on these mm -hmm. screens. It looks a little wider on the television monitors up high, a little more proportional showing this is the front of the house, this is the basement plan, these are all new walls. Uh, there's a step back here to show, um, to delineate that part of the house. And the three new window wells are all on the new addition portion. This is a glass block window um, in that part with the grate where I showed you the photo in the corner and this is a new glass block window in a new opening on the side of the house. This is the most prominent new window. This is the only one that you'd likely see. Photo of the three proposed windows in Wells. It's just CMU foundation there right now for all three of those windows. 
And this is the location of the new glass block window on the north elevation. It would go beneath uh, this existing historic window with shutters. Casements, Anderson 100 series, galvanized wells, um, standard size egress windows. They're not too huge. Uh, there are floor plans in the packet showing before and after. This is the main floor. You can see the new, they're just calling it a foyer here right now, with the new stairs going down to the basement. Uh, east elevation, existing and proposed. The change is that this, this the, the front um, sill has been raised by 16 inches, um, or two courses of CMU. It's, this is where I showed you the photos where it's very low to the ground now. So this guy back here would be raised up to 34 inches where I showed you the modern CMU back in that corner. There would have to be some changes made to the porch, like wooden porch stairs would have to be added, um, one or two steps to get up to the, the deck, um, which, way, which they would just remove and put back. Um, and since that's not included in this application, you might want to um, consider just saying that that will be a staff approval or actually I'm not even sure that you have to do that because I do have the authority to replace um, things like wood front ste steps yeah with appropriate ones um, this is the north elevation existing on the top here's the proposed uh, new shed roof addition it does have a, a large picture window on this side and on the back, it has uh, a triple slider. Picture window is definitely not competing <laughs> or, uh, or matching too closely to the historic windows, um, but I do feel that it's far enough back on the house that letting a lot of light into that space um, is, is a, a good idea, and I, I, I don't think that it will um, um, compete with the historic house in any way. Oh, and here you can see that new glass block window in the new 16 inch uh, foundation above grade. This is the back. Um, that deck would just be truncated to allow the addition to be put on. Now we've got the south elevation with the three um, egress windows in wells and the one new glass block window on the historic part of the house. There's window information. They're all clad Anderson windows. Um, here's the picture window. And uh, from the Secretary of Interior standards, the ones that best apply are 2, 9, and 10, all of which I've read to you already tonight. From the guidelines for additions, um, I've already read to you most of these two. Uh, let's see, let me make sure that there's nothing important here that I've not read to you yet. Um, Designing a new addition in a manner that makes clear what is historic and what is new is recommended, and locating it at the rear or an inconspicuous side of a historic building. Uh, windows, it's recommended to design and install additional windows on rear or non-character defining elevations if required by the new use. I do feel that the basement windows are very inconspicuous and um, will be located on modern CMU walls or co poured concrete, I'm not sure which. And placing new walls in a different plane from the historic structure in a subordinate position to the historic fabric is appropriate, and they are proposing to do that. From the Ann Arbor Historic District Design Guidelines for Construction, it's appropriate to retain the historic relationship between buildings, landscape features, and open space. And that's the end of my slides. Let me jump back a second to the staff report, see what else I didn't read to yet. So that, that inset is 8 inches, which is good, uh, at the back corner of the house. Oh, here it is. The, the proposed addition's 150 square feet results in modern additions totaling 41% of the 1947 floor area and footprint. 
Uh, staff believes that increasing the height of the foundation wall 16 inches will result in only minimal visual changes while allowing a vast increase in the amount of habitable space in the house. As such, the work meets the city and federal standards and guidelines applied by the Historic District Commission. Um, at the review committee, which I'm sure the re review committee members will bring up, um, there was a question about uh, the depth of the basement, which was going to 9 and 10 feet, and whether it was necessary to raise the building at all, given that um, the, the proposed depth of the basement was, was very large. <laughs> um, and perhaps it would be better to leave the building at grade um, uh, and just make the, the basement one foot shorter on the inside. Um, but that aside, I do think that the work that's proposed uh, is appropriate um, as laid out in the very thorough application. So that's it for staff's report. Thank you, Ms. Thatcher. Commissioners Fortner and myself were on the review committee, so we'll give our reports now. Um, I forgot, is it my turn or your turn to go first? <laughs> I don't remember. Okay, well, why don't you go? Okay. Um, the only thing I would add to the staff report is that it was clear that, you know, having the wooden components of the original house on grade <laughs> has been a problem, you know, with. Uh, deterioration of those components and so raising house would have the effect of protecting the original wood components yeah I would agree the um, I mean the house almost looks like it's like sinking into the ground there like you, you cannot it has a rubble foundation but you can not see you can maybe see two inches if you can see any of the existing foundation so um, you can't even say it's a character-defining character feature of the exterior, <laughs> really, because you can't see it. It's not there. I mean, it's obviously would be incredible, and you would want to save it if it was visible. Um, but it's underground. And, I mean, you saw the skirt board there. Like, the skirt board is just, like, right there, and, and there's a, how, uh, a beam. It's, po you know, post and beam. Mm. There's wood structure right behind that skirt board and because it's a rubble foundation uh you know the rubble has like the the tops of the rubble it's curvy and it you there with uh there was a, a a moment where it was pointed out to us like you could see the interior structure of the house from the outside because it had rot you know the protection had rotted away and the structure itself you could see was rotting away itself and um, there was another house a couple a couple homes down that we've also seen presented to us that had similar issues with the structure of the home itself rotting um, so uh, let me see what else um, I would say that what we're gonna see from the front then after it's raised is that the only change should be the new stairs, but then we will see uh, CMU, 16 inches of CMU below the hen and chicks. And I do have a question of like that, like how, like I just want to visualize exactly what that's going to look like and, and how they're planning on either treating that CMU or if it's just going to be bare gray hmm. CMU b below the historic house. Um, I, I, I just want to hear more about that. Um, and so that's my report. I see we've got the applicants here. So at this point, would you please unmute and give us your name and address and let us know if there's anything you'd like to add to what you've heard so far. Hi, um, my name is Tammy Stevenson. Um, this is my husband, Mitch Gerzak. Um, we live at 1223 Traber Road, um, Ann Arbor, Michigan, 48105. And um, Jill pretty much covered um, our application really well. Um, I guess we just want to stress that, um, you know, the reasons for our um, application are that initially we were, we've been brainstorming many ideas on how to provide additional living space for us and our two little girls. And um, the idea of putting in a basement sort of fulfills that additional living space, but also it helps to preserve the integrity and structural, the structural integrity of our house. Um, since 
Um, we do have some exposed structural beams on the outside, and um, we do have some problems with rodents that we've tried to address through my husband's chicken wire and also professional um, um, services. Um, and you can hear the little animals nesting in our house. Um, so hopefully a basement would help take care of that. Um, the also, um, the proposal to raise it 16 inches is sort of also to provide a cushion for us um, and the brick layer. Um, they have to raise the house permanently at least six inches um, um, while they're lifting and installing a new basement and raising it um, at least a foot or 16 inches um, will also then provide some cushion and wiggle room for the brick layer, but also enable the house to sit up higher so that we don't have continual wood rot um, on our wood siding, um, being, having it so close to the ground. So hopefully raising the house will preserve um, the wood structure um, paneling around our house. Um, we did um, talk with the commissioners that visited too about putting a wood lattice around our porch and also putting in eight inch closed wood um, riser stairs um, to access the porch. Um, and so for the most part, the only thing that you would see on the um, hens of the house would be, if that, um, the CMU blocks. Um, usually it's pretty, there's, it's covered by lots of foliage, even though I know that's not considered a permanent um, sort of blockage, but we do sit up on a hill, as Jill pointed out. So for the most part, you can't really see um, the lower portion of our house um, from the street. Um, do you have anything you want to add? No, I guess, yeah, if there's a concern about the CMU appearance, I mean, we'd be open to doing any sort of, and if there's a secondary process you can put over it, um, that's more, I guess, palatable. But yeah, we, we'd be open to including that in the application. Okay. Um, well, at this point, I'll ask commissioners if you have any questions for the applicant. I do not. Okay. Um, I was wondering, uh, I have a question or two. So the, um, I was wondering if, uh, I, I guess I was curious, if what are you going to do with the rubble foundation, if anything, that you're removing? Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep it. Yeah. <laughs> just, just because. Yeah, I, I I hate to see it go, but it's. Uh, I, th I think this will be a good improvement for the house. But um, yeah, I don't. I don't know what we'll do with it. Um, maybe we maybe we can do a rock wall somewhere. There used to be a rock wall. Yeah. Between our house and the uh, the neighbors, not not Mary, not the house, the purple house on the the <laughs> south side, but the on the the east side. Um, so you can see that years ago, I don't know if we could do something like that to, to replace the, um, the uh, wood fence or something, but uh, that's, that's maybe one of the only the ideas that's come to mind. But yeah, I think keeping those for posterity would be interesting to me. Yeah, we've, we've sort of just talked about what we can do, but we haven't yeah. really decided. We're, we're not retaining we're... the retaining walls along the driveway are yeah. wood and they're falling right. apart so that we could maybe use those the, the stones to make a you know sort of a, a like a cobblestone sort of a retaining wall if, if that could be approved so maybe for landscaping if anything that would be great uh if you could yeah reuse uh the those old stones that would uh be really wonderful and we would support that um okay so back to the cmu uh foundation so, I mean, there, there are a couple things you could do to, um, I think, to help it be more compatible with the historic home. And, uh, I mean, one, the very least I th you could do, I think, is just paint it. Uh, mm -hmm. Some color that would be not like the gray uh, CMU color. Uh, and then one step up from there, is um, basically a plaster treatment called parging where it's very common 
you put plaster over the CMU and then that can either be left as is or painted as well. Um, mm -hmm. But it's just a plaster treatment and I think mm -hmm. that, um, so anyway, that, that, that's regarding the CMU. Um, okay, I don't have any other questions, so I don't see any others. Let's go to the, um, the public hearing at this moment. So we will uh, allow persons to speak for up to three minutes now on this application at 1223 Traverse Street. So please either raise your hand or press star nine and we'll go to Alexis. And I have a feeling we might have someone. <laughs> We have no new uh, joiners to the meeting. Okay. Um, but our one attendee, if you would like to speak, please feel free. Okay. I do not think we have any takers. I think you can close the public hearing. Very good. Thank you very much. Um, so we'll close the public hearing now. And I'll ask a commissioner to please make a motion on this application. I think it's my turn. <laughs> okay. I move that the commission issue a certificate of appropriateness for the application at 1223 Traver Street, a contributing property in the Broadway Historic District, to replace and raise the house's foundation 16 inches above grade, install two glass block windows, one in a new opening, install three egress windows with wells on a modern addition, and construct a 150 square foot addition to enclose stairs to access the expanded basement. As proposed, the work is compatible in exterior design, arrangement, texture, material, and relationship to the surrounding resources and meets the Ann Arbor Historic District design guidelines for additions and new construction and the Secretary of the Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitation, rehabilitating historic buildings, in particular standards 2, 9, and 10, and the guidelines for district, neighborhood, building site, new additions, and windows. Support. That was moved by Commissioner Fortner and seconded by Commissioner White. Um, so I guess let's discuss the motion here and, and there's kind of like several bits of it, but I'm just curious like if anyone has any comments on the addition portion of the, there's a one story addition. I don't see any comments there. It seems uh, very straightforward and, and uh, meeting the standards. Now there's the the windows, the basement windows and egress wells. I'm curious about that portion, if there's anything there. No discussion uh, for the same reason, I would assume. And then I guess there's just the question of uh, the new foundation. And I'm curious if anyone has any comments there. Well, it, yeah. I, it hadn't occurred to me when we were there, but based on the staff report of the 47 foot setback from the street and the four foot elevation change, I'm not sure from the right away that you will see the foundation. Good point. Any other comments? Oh. Oh. Do you have a comment, Mr. More so just, uh, I just appreciate the, the efforts uh, of the applicant uh, slash homeowners um, and kind of thinking creatively on how to increase their habitable space but also extend the, the life of the, the historic structure um, in an appropriate way. Um, it, it shows, you know, they really care about the property and I appreciate that. Very nice. Yeah. I, I would like to bring up again the, the just trying to visualize um, the CMU wall. Uh, to me, it, it, it'll be very juxtaposed, like a, a, a new CMU wall below a historic home like this. And I, I guess that I've, there's probably dozens of examples of this in our historic districts, but it's maybe been around for a while and like, it's sort it's of been weathered and looks like it, you know, I, I just feel like this, there's maybe something we can do. And it sounds like the applicants are at least um, amenable to the, these things. And um, I just think that at the very least, if it's painted, um, maybe some new, you know, whatever color, obviously, but it, uh, it mm -hmm. just seems like that would lessen the blow of 
you're shaking your head. Let's let's hear a comment from uh, Commissioner. <laughs> We're not in the design business. I like I like the parging. Okay. I like yeah, I like the parging. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, can we add to the motion then a, a parged foundation or something like that? And I, I think that would certainly take care of it in my estimation. Um, does anyone else have comments or? Yeah, I'm, sounds like I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. And if the homeowners are okay, also. So do we want to amend? I'm sorry. I, it sounds like. It sounds like the right thing to do here. Yes. Okay, so if we say to replace and raise the house's foundation 16 inches above grade with a parged finish. Great. Yep. Mm -hmm. Anyone seconding that? Okay. Oh, support. <laughs> sure. So the, the motion was uh, amended by. Commissioner Fortner and supported by Commissioner White. And I'll ask if there's any other comments at this point. It doesn't seem like it. So let's go to a vote. All those in favor, please say yes. 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 All those opposed? Well, there you go. The, uh, the motion carries. Your application has been approved. Please note you must apply for any required permits from the city before uh, beginning your project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you too. Okay, so that does it for hearings. We're on to G new business. G one election of officers. Oh. Do we have enough people to do that today? And yeah, I don't brilliant. really think that we do. And I kind of sprung this on you without yeah. notice. Well, so I'm wondering. Well, we can promote a lot of people. <laughs> I, I'm wondering if Commissioner White would like to come back with a slate of officers next month for us. Yes. Since he is typically the nominating committee. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner White. Okay, so moving on to approval of the minutes. We've got the December minutes that were emailed to us, so we can approve those. Did everyone have a chance to take a look at those? I did not. I didn't get my paper copy. Okay. Is there a paper copy for Commissioner White? No, I don't have one. Okay, we don't have a paper copy. That's all right. Is that all right? Okay. Proceed. Okay, I think we will proceed. Is everyone all right with that? Okay, so um, hearing no objections, we've approved the minutes for December. Thank you very much. And now we'll go on to reports from commissioners. Do we have any reports from commissioners? No. Seeing none, we'll go to assignments. We've got Monday, February 7th at noon for the next meeting. Everyone get out your calendars. Or we can just assign it to the people that aren't here, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I mean, I've done the last two, but I can do this one as well because uh, noon, <laughs> noon works for me. I do, I do the noons when I can, but don't, don't put me on until other, someone else is. Okay. Yeah, but I can be in there as an alternate. Okay, I'll put you as an alternate. Any other takers? I'm, I can do the seven. Oh, good. You can. Okay, great. Jess is thinking about it. Uh, Jill, you can put me down as another TBD. Okay. Okay. Uh, noon can be a little tricky, but if I you will, need me. I'll also email um, Anna and uh, Jennifer. Great. And see okay. if one of them can do it. If they can't, I'll let you know. Okay. And if you can't, I'll let you know. Very good. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. And now we'll go to K reports from staff. Are there any reports so, from staff? We do, um, we've got the December staff report. Yeah, I don't have anything uh, specific for you here. Lots of mechanical stuff on this month's staff activities. Any questions, just let me know. Are you getting a lot of meter requests at the moment? No, the meter program seems to be winding down. Okay. I think it's weather related. I think they've just sort of Stop yep. doing stuff for a while. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, I haven't seen them since December. Yeah. yeah. I think we're pretty close on this area that they were working on. Next year, they'll be moving up to a small area of West Washington and 
Huron that's still in the historic district. Uh, but I think the lower part of the older west, old west side is mostly completed. Okay. At least this body's work on yep, it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, then we'll move on to L, concerns of commissioners. Um, you know, I was a little concerned about showing up here today, I guess, and, and figuring out not just for our health, but also just like how the meeting was going to be run. And I, it seemed like we got through it just as good as we have been, I guess, for the last year. It's good. nice to see all of your, like, I don't know, 50% of your faces. Uh, it kind of helps like to be able to, you know, look around and yeah. see the at least body posture, if not facial expression. But yep. we're close to getting there. I agree. Um, I don't know, how will we know if it worked for the applicants? And I, I guess we did hear from Chris that said that he really appreciated that he didn't have to be here. So do we know if this is gonna be moving forward? Uh, I think this is, the model, option or? this is the model for a while. Okay. Yeah, we do have a working session after this meeting that has to be in person because it's not televised. But um, that's the only instance where people have to be here in person. Okay. If someone would prefer to be here than to be on Zoom, that's another instance where they are perfectly welcome to do that. Um, we're never going to keep anybody out of the meeting in city council chambers. Um, but I'm very happy that people are, are um, taking our suggestion that it would be uh, preferable to us that they Zoom in. And I do think that that worked pretty well tonight. Yeah. Very good. Okay, so M, communications, any communications? Nope. Okay, so then we can adjourn uh, the January 13th, 2022 Historic District Commission meeting. Thank you very much.